Good afternoon and welcome to the press conference which will launch or announce the launch of the Newark Community Street Team. I'm Marjorie Harris, Press Secretary to Mayor Ross Baraka. Uh, thank you for the many supporters and partners who've come out this afternoon. We'd like to begin the press conference by bringing up Mr. Akila Sherrills, who has come in from Los Angeles and who is going to speak about the uh, outreach and the history between uh, himself and this program. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Again, my name is Akilah Shirelles, and I'm the director of the New Work Community Street Team. Um, many folks might know, I, I participated in what many social justice activists call the longest running war in the history of this country, which has been urban street gang wars. In LA County alone, over the past 30 years, it's claimed some 20 to 25,000 lives. It doesn't include those who've been permanently maimed or those who have been incarcerated for the rest of their life behind their participation. It's been a major uh, mental health epi epidemic. Um, and um, uh, many of the lives that are lost go unaccounted for and unaddressed because of the frame I think that we've approached trying to, to address the issue with. Um, we recognize that, that violence is a public health issue that most of the conflicts um, that happen in the community, um, the spike with violence and crime, is a result of unresolved trauma. And the effort that we're engaging today is about addressing those things through a community-based, a community relation-based strategy um, to look at addressing the, the trauma that individuals suffer from in the neighborhood. Um, in 1992, I was instrumental in organizing the peace treaty that changed the quality of life in our neighborhood. Um, with the support of my mentor, who's here today, Jim Brown, um, we've seen the peace treaty, in the first two years of the peace treaty in L.A., gang homicides and crime dropped 44%. And over the past 20 years, um, we've had 10 consecutive years of decreases in violent crime and murder because of this strategic partnership between community and law enforcement working together. About 10 years ago, um, I supported the mayor in his effort to organize a peace treaty here in the city of Newark. Um, between um, several gang factions. Um, some of those individuals are here today. Um, you know, my brother Mitty right here, you know, uh, Byron, Kelly, brother Sharif, brother k -Bub. All of these brothers were instrumental in working in the neighborhood to bring about a decrease in violence in the city. And it's, took, it's taken us 10 years to get to this point, but you know, it's a, it's a, it's a happy day for us. Um, We don't see, you know, gangs problems in the community just as the, the primary issue. We recognize it as a symptom of a deeper problem that's rooted in individual self-esteem and the disconnect that happens in the personal lives. So we're, we're identifying and hiring outreach workers, interventionists in this community who live in this neighborhood, um, who have long-term relationships with folks in this community um, through a, a mentoring, mentoring young folks in this community through a case management model so that we provide strategic resources and services to them um, so that um, we can begin to, to bring a, a close to this ep epidemic that's affecting the community. So I'm, I'm really proud you know, to be here to serve as a director of the New York Community Street Team, um, taking this strategic approach, looking at violence as a public health issue, um, because ultimately, um, if, if, if community is not the, the first um, or the, the, the primary um, effort in decreasing violence in the community, if they're not the ones who are, are focused on, or the, 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 excuse me. Take your time, brother. Take your time. So community is the first line of defense in any public safety effort. And law enforcement is there to reinforce that. So this is, this is the mayor's effort at being able to reduce crime and violence, starting in the South Ward, and then expanding this effort throughout the city. So, again, I am I'm just excited about being here today to stand with all of you um, in, this, in this new effort. It's a six-month pilot project that we know will be ex extended, you know, um, you know, for the next three to four years, and ultimately, you know, again, throughout the city. 
And um, yes, so I, I want to, you know, thank you all for coming, and uh, and bring up the next speaker. Brother Akila said, "Public, I mean, violence is a public health issue, and we are honored to have someone at the forefront of this dialogue. Our own Dr. Hanan Hamdi." Good morning. My name is Hannah Hamdi. I'm the health director for the city of Newark. Um, the science tells us that violence is a public health issue. We know it is a public health issue because we know it. We live it. Its impact is very broad and it touches many life domains. Exposure to violence increases the risk to tremendous range of vulnerabilities, mental health, like as post-traumatic disorder, depression, excessive hostility, and generalized anxiety, substance abuse, physical health problems, interpersonal struggles, eating disorders, and among many, suicidality. Violence does touch every area of life, not obviously or readily connected with the experience of violence itself. This broad impact makes it particularly important to address the less evident links between violence and its soliloquy. The partnership between the health department and Newark Street Community Street Team is timely and necessary. The Department of Health is incorporating trauma-specific and trauma-informed approach to all of our medical and social service programs. In terms of the specifics, the Department of Health will provide guidance on public health strategies and the methods used to combat disease. In this case, violence, which stems in and is perpetuated by trauma. We will work with NCST to provide ongoing training and certification so that they become community health workers, which includes certification and mental health, um, certification and mental health workers, which we know is at the core of this. NCST will be armed with public health tools to connect and address the less obvious dots between violence and community wellness. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hamdi. Uh, if you're gonna have a street team, you have to have a street counselor. And we are honored to have a street counselor, uh, Mr. Tyrone Barnes. Good morning, Noah. Good morning, Noah. Good morning. We out here, it's good to be here. We waited a long time to get here. Right. While you can drop bombs from the air, and eventually you have to send troops. We out here, we gonna be on the ground and we prepared to do our duties. This is our city. The residents of North have to understand that. The time is now. The time is now that we put down the guns, put down the weapons, and save lives in the streets of North. You deserve to live, you must live. This is our moment. I thank the Honorable Mayor Raz Baraka, who supported us throughout this whole entire deal to make this happen. Ty Cooper, Vince Computo, Gina Jones, the list going on, NBRI, very instrumental, of course, to get here. Ruckers, the funders, we here to tell you that your check ain't go bounce. We here to perform and we will do our job to the best of our ability. Nobody can articulate the facts better than us. Nobody can do it better than us. We out here, we been out here. No anti-violence coalition have been doing the work and they have done the work. We collaborate with many different organizations because we got to form full vote. We got to form Voltron to make this city a better city. Thank y'all. We, we have uh, our next speaker, and I cannot say his name without beginning by legend, legendary. We have the legendary NFL player, Mr. Jim Brown. Thank you. I love you too, my brother. That's why I'm here. Good afternoon. 
ladies and gentlemen, to all of my friends here, to the mayor of this city, thank you so much for And up to I don't think you all realize and feel what you realize. says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And we are very lucky to have a visionary to lead the city of Newark, our own mayor, the Honorable Ross J. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. So, so I just want to first uh, thank all the partners that are here with us today, PSENG uh, Foundation for helping us out, Rutgers University, Newark Finance, uh, reduction Initiative and VRI and the work they've been doing prior to this and partnering with us to make this a success. The Victoria Foundation was always Johnny on the spot helping us in the city of Newark, making sure that we do and have what we need. Uh, the Urban League, uh, Cox Frazier's here, uh, Ray Acasio from La Casa de Don Pedro, of course our friends at Beth Israel uh, is always in the building. Uh, Dr. Brennan always helpful in terms of uh, it's making sure that we have a healthy community, so we're, we're glad to have them with us. And everybody in my office, from Ty and, 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 and Udo and everybody else who helped make this happen, uh, we want to say thank you to you uh, for the work that you've done to make this a success. Uh, street Council, uh, all of the, the folks that are in the Newark Community Street Team, and my brother Akila said it earlier, the guys who uh, did this before it was popular, before it was any money, <laughs> Before it was uh, uh, um, anybody involved in any of this, from the original Save Ourselves, uh, you know, that participated in these streets trying to reduce the, the violence that takes place in the city of Newark, and we're doing it again. Present here in the city of Newark is necessary for us to make this happen. Uh, I also want to say the, the Newark Police Department has been doing a yeoman's job trying to reduce the violence in our community. 
Um, but, but they can't do it alone, right? They need help and assistance. I think we may have to pause for the students who are coming down from Weekway High School. I think Naomi Nick should take a picture of that. <laughs> they're, they're protesting the superintendent of schools. So as they walk by, we're gonna give them a, a, a shout out and a hooray. I'd rather them be on the streets protesting than out the street with guns. We play high school, yeah. We play high school. They don't want their school closed now. So, and I didn't orchestrate this now, but it just came on. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't make this happen. It wasn't part of the plan. But we love it. But, but um, you know, uh, but they can't do it alone. And we, we, we know what happened in Baltimore and what's happening around the country. Uh, it means that we need community involvement and it's the way that we get it done. We are so excited to have legendary Hall of Famer uh, uh, Jim Brown in town with us today. We are excited about his uh, presence and his, his support and his help in, in making this program a success here in the city of Newark and helping us to bring other uh, uh, folks into Newark and, and in, in urban centers around the country to highlight the, the violence that's going on in our communities every single day. Uh, we, we're working hard to make that uh, disappear here in the city of Newark. And uh, uh, Akila was uh, very modest. I think the work that he's done around the country speaks for itself. His travels, him even going to Ireland and South Africa, different places to help with violence in those countries, right? So his, his work is uh, world renowned, and we're glad to have him in the city of Newark with us uh, as well, and I think that I know this program is going to be very, very successful uh, here in the city of Newark without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, they said it's a six-month pilot, but we know that the work that these gentlemen and ladies are going to do is going to make sure that the program is longer than six months, that it's a year, that it's three, that it's four years, that it goes on for decades, because uh, that's how long we need it. Uh, we need to be funding money in other areas of our community. And in order for us to do that, we have to do something about the violence that's hap happening in our neighborhoods, uh, which means that we have to address it as public health. And, I, and I'm gonna be quiet, but I'm, I'm gonna tell you, when I say public health, people don't really under ne necessarily know what that means, right? So when, when there's a disease, uh, so when, when Newark had the, uh, the scare of meningitis, there are protocols that get set in place immediately to respond to public health emergencies. When there's the Ebola scare, there's a protocol that's set in place immediately that, that, that has health workers involved, that have social workers involved, that have all kinds of investigators involved, the health departments involved at the state level, at the county level, at the city level. All these agencies are working together to find out what's happening. When, when somebody is murdered in our city, those things don't trigger automatically uh, and they need to. If, some, if we were standing out here and a mosquito came and bit one of you on the neck and you died from that mosquito bite uh, uh, two days later, a whole team would be in place trying to figure out where that mosquito came from. They would find out not only where the mosquito came from, but the family of the mosquito. <laughs> did, did, did it bite anybody else? And how did it get here into this community? There would be community meetings with everybody in the neighborhood to warn them about the mosquito bite and symptoms of what would happen if you happen to get bitten by that same mosquito. I mean, they, they'll be all up and down the street knocking on doors, pulling people in to make sure that that did not take place. Not only that, they would the person that was bit, they would go through their whole life cycle. What did they eat that morning? Where did, what stores did they visit? How many, uh, did they ever go to the hospital? What school did they go to? All of this information would be used to find a cure or to prevent the further uh, deaths from this one tiny mosquito. Here we are with hundreds of people being killed a year in cities, in some cities 500, and we do not have the strength of purpose, no resource to pull together and say, we're gonna figure out why these people are being murdered at this alarming rate. What, what's wrong with their behavioral patterns? What's wrong with what's going on in, in, in the community to begin to prevent these things from taking place? In Newark, we're beginning to move in that direction and I'm happy about it. And uh, the Newark Community Street Team is gonna be a success here in the city of Newark and we are gonna reduce 
the, the murders and violence in this community with the help of all the other agencies in this city, the N NCST is going to be at the front line of it. So God bless you and we thank you for coming out. Do we have any questions about uh, the Newark Community Street Team? Naomi, of course. Maybe just standing in our yellow shirts. No, but uh, I think we uh, brought on about 13 people. Is, is that number correct? 15 uh, of folks. And so, uh, they, as was said earlier, they're going to. It's a, a case model that all these guys have been, and ladies have been trained. That they've been going through training. They're going to work in these communities, specifically in the model neighborhoods uh, uh, that we're focusing on, which includes the South, but also the West War. Um, you know, we are going to try to intervene in problems before they take place, begin to de-escalate situations that take place in the community so they don't result in people being murdered on the street. And when there's a killing, we want to try to uh, de-escalate that so it doesn't turn one doesn't turn into four doesn't turn into five and we begin to work with kids in school to begin to to you know deter them from getting involved in a life of violence and crime and show them other opportunities uh, other than the ones that have been presented to them so they're going to be doing a lot of ground street work places that's missing where, where fathers aren't they'll be where mothers aren't they'll be where social workers aren't readily available they'll be but counselors aren't Johnny on the spot, they'll be on the spot. But there's no one to talk to when you come out of the youth house, they'll present that ear to be talked to. And there's two groups that are that are fat, ha having a faction over something that's silly and, and, and uh, minuscule, but it's elevated and escalated when you're dealing with traumatic stress syndrome here in these communities, uh, they'll be there. And I say traumatic stress syndrome, I don't say post-traumatic, because it's not over. Post suggests that you've been through something and it's finished and now you're dealing with the after effects of that. You're talking about children who are readily involved in trauma every day that's ongoing and never stops. So there is no kind of label for that. So we, we are putting folks in the community to begin to try to deal with those issues that we have. Andrew, Files One News. Also, I don't know, speaking of the family or community, a way to link um, where we could have more fathers in the homes. And I know in the African-American community, 73 out of wedlock. And how we, can we get more families and less government dependency so the kids have more fathers? Sorry. I grew up in South Orange, right up the street, and I got to see, you know, in an African-American community, you'll see them all. Then in North, I saw the difference with the breakdown of the family. So how can we always incorporate that? My question was how can we incorporate having more followers in the home? I know in the African American community we have 73% out of wedlock. Or in the inner city, less in the suburbs, and I lived right up the street in South Orange. So I got to see the difference when there was two parents. So through the church groups, or how can we create with the kids coming up, the 14, 15, 8th graders, how uh, they're more dependent on the father, on the family unit, and less on the government, which often exasperates the problem. Thank well, I don't know if we're dependent on the government, because we can't been dependent on them not much lately. But uh, uh, number one, uh, most, most American families end in divorce. Let me just say that statistic, period. Most American families are not together. So you're talking about uh, that coupled with the kind of uh, economic uh, stress factors that exist in this community and social issues that are compound the problem. Uh, and so if you're in the suburb, you probably could get a job uh, and other kinds of things. So your divorce doesn't affect the family as much as it would if you are separated and you don't have a job and the mother is on her own barely getting a job. So it, it compounds the issues and the problems in the community as well. You had a young man walking by yelling a little frustrated because he probably wants a job too. Nobody comes to City Hall and asks me for money. Nobody comes and asks me for food stamps. Nobody, there's not a long line in City Hall asking me for government assistance. What they're asking me for is a job. I never have a long line of people saying, Mayor, I want to be on Family First. I've, I've never seen anybody, I've not even seen one person ask me to be on Family First. When the guy was walking by yelling, he didn't say, we need Family First cards. 
What he said is, we, I need a job, right? And so the idea, in order to stop what we're just saying, is to us to create opportunities for employment and jobs in this community. And that's a whole different discussion and a whole different press conference, but it's related to this because what we're doing is trying to mitigate the circumstances and the consequences of the economic deprivation that's taking place in these communities. That's what we're doing here, and usually we use the police to try to mitigate the, those situations. And what happens is, what happened in Baltimore, New York, you get frustrated police officers, some of them with, with ideas in their head that they shouldn't have, and you get a frustrated community that are trying to deal with the, the, the economic situation that none of them can deal with, that turns into a fight between police and community on the street, when obviously we have to do something about uh, our households by providing employment, by providing jobs, by providing decent uh, education for our kids. And so that's what we're doing. And, it, and in the absence of that, these street workers have to be present on the ground to try to solve some of the issues that take place in our community so they don't result in murder at five o'clock in the afternoon in front of a school. But what you're saying, there is no possibility of having more kids born in wedlock. And there, is, there is a possibility. I don't think that we, this press conference can make uh, that the, the issue, but I, I do think that, uh, you know, ultimately, uh, that that should happen, but I don't think that that is the problem. I think that conservatives make that the problem because what it does is puts the, the problem on individuals right. as opposed right. to the society. Right. Because there are many families, right. like I said earlier, there are many, many American families across the country that are not together. Mothers right. and fathers that do not have a father in the household. There, 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 there are many veterans who who are away from their families and their mothers that they're raising their kids by themselves, who have other opportunities and scaffolding to make their families strong, right, still. So it's, it's important that we provide opportunities for families, no matter what they look like, right, to make sure uh, that the children are taken care of, that the mother is taken care of, and that ultimately the kids are not in the street looking for dr the drug trade as an opportunity to make a living, to make crime their career. Right, and so we have to make careers for other people. But in the meantime, you have to have people that are going to steer them away from them, to give them the strength of purpose, to give them the dignity, to give them the courage, the wherewithal to say, you can outlive this difficult moment and there's better times for you. Look at me, I've been through this situation and now I'm doing something other with my other things with my life and you should do the same thing with yours. Right, so there's people who are in the street teams who probably been in the same situations that some of the guys and girls that they're talking to to pull them out of. And I think that that's important. And, uh, you know, I get criticized for it because uh, people are just, you know, we're very conservative here in this state, but uh, we, we get criticized for it. But the reality is, the best person that can tell you how to get somewhere is somebody who's been there already. Right, so I would rather have somebody who's been to the situation tell me how to get out of it than get on my GPS and try to navigate through it through a computer. Right, so. I, 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 it's, it's easier for me to get these individuals to help me get out of this situation. And I got credibility, right? I, I got credibility. So these, are, these guys have credibility. And I just want to applaud the foundations and, and, and all the corporations and the folks that believe the Rutgers and the RI that finally said that there has to be another way. There has to be another We're talking about five decades of uh, violence and murder in our community, of, of, there must be another way. And so I applaud you, and, and in Newark, we're gonna try to look for other ways to help and support and supplement the work that our police department is trying to do in, this, in these streets to make their job easier, their life safer, and make our communities better. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions may be directed to me at the press office. Thank you.